Brother Mel, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how are you doing, first of all? I'm doing great. Uh, it's great to be back. And uh, hello to to yourself and Jay. Uh, great to, to be with you all. Thank you. So tell me uh, a little bit about this uh, Exposing the Myth series. And uh, if, if, if all goes well, you know, whether now or now and later, what is it that you are planning on covering for now, at least? Okay, so th I think that the main um, focus this series is to look at the Zoroastrian connections with the beginnings of Islam and how Islam expanded. When Islam moved into Persia, it didn't um, um, not interact with the religion that was there and picked up quite a bit along the way and completely changed whatever the religion was like before that. It completely transformed the religion and made it what it is today. So it's um, it's quite um, explosive material that we're going to be covering. Wonderful. So what is the first thing that you want to talk about in this particular episode right now? Okay, so in this episode, we're going to be looking at the origin of the name Zamzam. Um, so this is going to be really the first time um, you will have heard of this. Um, we've been exploring the Zamzam from different angles. Um, I'd like to just start with this reference to Deut Deuteronomy 6.14, which is my kind of guideline with all of the, the next bit of material. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. Um, so what we're going to see is that Islam has taken on aspects of a religion that has many different gods, which from Christian point of view, there is only one God. So any other gods are actually false gods or perhaps even demons. So that's where I'm coming at it. So the the standard Islamic narrative gives a story as, as regards the origin of the Zamzam well. I won't go into it in great detail, but it's a familiar story of Hagar uh, and, uh, and her infant running up and down looking for water. And then uh, she... She has a miraculous spring appear in front of her, and then she says, apparently, Zome, Zome, which is supposed to mean stop flowing, and this is where the um, the name Zamzam came. Um, now, there's a number of problems with this story. Uh, the Bible says that they were sent out from Beersheba and not Mecca. So if you can have a look at Genesis 21, 14, so that's the first major problem. The second is the explanation that it, comes from Zome Zome, stop flowing, doesn't even make sense. Why would a thirsty person ask for a spring to stop flowing? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it all just kind of was peculiar. So I think this explanation is a kind of a cover story. It, it kind of fits because it's at least it's a reference to water, but I think this is not the true origin. This is the perceived origin of the name Zamzam. So what I'm going to suggest is that the true origin of the name links directly to polytheism and therefore to the demonic. Um, Psalm 95, 5 says, for all the gods of the Gentiles are devils, but the Lord made the heavens. So where I discovered this was really an, a, a mid 8th century source, which gives us a huge clue. Um, a Chinese source called Du Wan, who was a Chinese military officer, he became a a prisoner of war in 751 AD, just around the time when the Abbasids were about to take power. And um, he had taken part in a battle uh, of Talas between the, the Tayaye or the Dashi and the Tang military. He was, however, treated very well as a prisoner of war and spent 11 years traveling around the Levant and East Africa before returning to China and writing about his experiences. So he's a first hand um, person, so which is very handy. So he wrote um, a book called The Re Records of Travels, a work which has been almost completely lost. Thankfully, a few extracts survived in Tongin under volume 192 and 193, an encyclopedia compiled by his uncle, Du Yu. Um, so here's what he says. He writes about a place called uh, Molin, believed to be in East Africa. After crossing into the inland countries, there is a mountainous country which gathered a lot of confessions here or a lot of religions they have been they have three confessions he says the dashi fulin and zimzim the zimzim practice incest and in this respect are the worst of all barbarians so you may be able to guess some of these the dashi are the tayaye or the arabs and it's referring to the early islam the fulin refers to east roman i.e christianity 
And the Zimzim is a reference to Zoroastrianism. In the 6th century, the Persians annexed Yemen in the, the late 6th century and into early 7th century. So Zoroastrianism spread into East Africa as a result of these close links with Yemen. Um, can you hear me okay over there? Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah, just a second. Um, so you might already um, see a similarity between Zimzim and Zamzam, but it gets better. Um, in a specific sense, the Zimzim refers to Zoroastrians of Persia, but in a wider sense, pagans in general. Do Islam Islamic scholars concur with this? Do they see a connection between Zimzim and Zoroastrianism? Well, early Islamic sources use the terms, um, the Arabic terms, Zamzama and Zamazima to refer to the religious rites of Zoroastrianism and the Zoroastrians. And so the terms um, are onomata uh, po poet. Sorry, let me try that again. Onomata. I can't say that word. Else. Can I skip edit that bit out? Onomatopoeic. Skip. And a pat, and a, I'll, I'll skip that term because I'm I, I'm nervous, so I'm not going to say it right. So the terms uh, derive from what Arabs perceive to be an indistinct droning sound of the recitation of Avestan prayers and scriptures by Magi. So that's where the word comes from. Um, right. So we have also here um, Zamzama, the confused noise of distant thunder but widely used in the sources for early Islamic history for the priests of the Magians reciting and intoning the Zoroastrian prayers and scriptures, producing to the Arabs ears an indistinct droning sound. Um, and there's also here a reference to Al-Tabri. Um, he has the Zamzama of the Herdbads, which is the Zoroastrian priests. He refers to the Musa, uh, Musamzim, or adherent of Zoroastrianism and also to Zamzama for the Zoroastrian rites and Zamzima for the Magians in general. So it's pretty clear where the Zamzam comes from. It's a reference to Zoroastrianism. And we have here um, Al-Tabri actually saying it himself. So here are the references. Um, so we have volume five of Al-Tabri. So you see the term Zamzama in relation to the Zoroastrian religious formulae. Um, there at, in the footnote, we have uh, Muzam Zimum, um, which is in relation to um, Zoroastrian uh, rites. We also have this one, a man who was one of the Magians, Zam, uh, sorry, Zam Mazima, okay, of Marv. So there's plenty of evidence here to connect Zamzam with um, this well. And we also have in addition to that, there's a place in um, Persia uh, called the Zam, um, or well, we call this Greater Iran, really technically. So there's lots of connections here with the, the word Zam with, with Persia and the Zoroastrians. Digging a bit deeper, it turns out that Zam is actually a pagan god, or i.e. a demon. Zam is the Avestan language term for the Zoroastrian concept of Earth, in both the sense of land and soil. Um, the earth is viewed as a primordial element in Zoroastrian tradition and represented by a minor divinity called Zam, who is the hypostasis of the earth. Um, so this is quite, <laughs> quite a bombshell, really, when we look into the origin of this, this term. Uh, a little bit more about it here is the, the fact that the Zam refers to the earth and also to Mother Nature. Um, I suppose the nearest equivalent to it would be in South America, there, there's a, a, a goddess called, um, um, what's gone out of my head? Um, uh, can you Artemis. edit that bit out? Sorry. What is the name that has gone out of my head? Mama? No. I'll, uh, can you edit that bit out? I can't remember. Um, yeah. Okay. So the demon Zam isn't the only demon associated with Mecca. So the black stone on the Kaaba, according to St. John of Damascus, is linked to another demon, Aphrodite. These used to be idolaters and worshipped the morning star and Aphrodite, whom in their own language they called Kafar, which means great. And so down to the time of Heraclius, they were very great idolaters. This stone that they talk about is a head of that Aphrodite, whom they used to worship and whom they called Kafar, even to the present day, Traces of the carving are visible on it to careful observers. 
of course, whatever is there now is has been broken up. Maybe it was broken for that reason. But in any case, Aphrodite is the same as Venus and also is called Lucifer, the morning star. So there, this is another very uh, awkward connection um, to Mecca. Muslims believe that the stone was originally pure and dazzling white, but turned black because of sin, which is pretty much the same story as, as of Lucifer. And we also have this of uh, St. John of Damascus. How is it then that you rub yourselves against the stone in your Kaaba and kiss and embrace it? Then some of them say that Abraham had relations with Agar upon it, but others say that he tied the camel to it when he was going to sacrifice Isaac. So I would note here that the story attempts to cover up its inherent paganism. Before I go to the last one, do you want to comment either of you? Um, no, I mean, it's making sense to me. Jay, uh, would you like to comment on No, that? this is fascinating because you're now starting to put together the path of the black stone and also bringing it close to the Zamzam. Well, I want to see where you end up with this because this is an area that I'm personally interested in We've had this material. We've talked about the Zamzam well. You and I have actually gone through and shown where it has come, uh, ante uh, an not just antecedent to the 8th century, but subsequent from the 8th century. So you're now going to the other direction and showing that there is there is all this material coming out of China, also coming out of Zoroastrian's uh, antecedent points. Pretty uh, absolutely great stuff because we're going to see the historical record for both of these as we uncover these these artifacts and also these stones. And, and Mel, we uh, we have about maybe a minute and a half to two minutes to wrap this up. Okay. So Islam at least acknowledges that the Jamarat, the pillars, represent Satan. This is not a big secret. The story is that is meant to be symbolic of. A, a, reenactment of Abraham's Hajj, where he stoned three pillars representing the, the shaitan and Muslims temptation to disobey the will of Allah. Uh, uh, Arabs worship stones, so giving stones to Satan might have the hidden Gnostic meaning of making an offering to Satan, especially when we think of the other context, the wider context. Uh, throwing is just a more enthusiastic offering. So maybe making a symbol of Satan as part of a holy site is not such a good idea. The act of stoning is ambiguous at best and may have more sinister Gnostic meanings. On the face of it, to set up a pillar to represent Satan in the textbook is the textbook definition of making an idol. So in summary, I would say that the Zamzam well is linked to Zoroastrian, to the Zoroastrian demon Zam. The black stone represents Aphrodite or Lucifer and the Jamarat represents Satan. So this is a side of the story that no one has really talked about before. Right. And of course, this is the hidden side because there are many layers to, to the rights that are going on here. This is obviously not something that most Muslims would be conscious of. So just yeah. hand it why back am I you. not surprised? Why am I not surprised, brother? Uh, I mean, this is uh, definitely speaks into the heart of who is the founder of this religion. Uh, Jay, I'll give you the last word. Demon, Satan. Lucifer, not very popular. You're not going to be very popular, Mel, when you start going public with this. <laughs> this is going to be exciting. Let's see what kind of feedback we get. Wow, this is a great uncovering. Thanks so much, Mel. You're always coming up with some real priceless gems, which in this case are anything but gems. Amen. And speaking of stones, it is a gemstone for sure. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Jay. And look forward to the next one. Until then, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sierra International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.